Hello and welcome to Baiju's exam prep. Welcome to our daily quiz. Before we begin, don't forget to join our Telegram channel for regular updates on current affairs. The link for the same has been provided in the description box below and you can even scan the QR code that has been provided over here. So let's get started with the daily quiz and let's take a look at the first question. Consider the following statements with regard to the historic Ramappa temple in Telangana. The first statement says it is a Buddhist temple dedicated to Lord Buddha. Second statement says it is an example of Kakatiya architecture. And the third statement says in 2021 the temple was inscribed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Before we answer this question, let's talk about the Ramappa temple in detail and understand its architectural significance. Let's also understand the context in which this topic has been picked. This topic has been chosen because we have a column in today's The Hindu according to which cultural heritage sites in Telangana are under threat due to lack of protection by the government. The article talks about key cultural sites and heritage buildings of Telangana and how they have been neglected over the years without any conservation. Finally, the government of Telangana has woken up and seems to be taking a few conservation steps under the provisions of the Telangana Heritage Act. So this article makes a mention of the historic Ramappa temple located at Palampet in Telangana and it's in this context that the question has been chosen. See the Ramappa temple also known as the Rudreshwara temple which you can see in this image over here is a 13th century temple that is dedicated to Lord Shiva and obviously is a Hindu temple and not a Buddhist temple. According to inscriptions available it was built during the Kakatiya dynasty that ruled the Deccan region in the 13th century and it was constructed in the year 1213 CE by Recharla Rudri Reddy who was a general under rural Ganapati Deva of the Kakatiya dynasty. This temple complex is located near the historic Ramappa lake in the Warangal region and it was designed by architect Ramappa after whom the temple complex has been named. This temple happens to be a standout feature of Kakatiya architecture which adopted the Vesara temple style of architecture that fused the temple architectural styles of South India and North India. You can clearly see that Kakatiya architecture draws influences from Chalukya architecture and is seen as a fusion of Dravidian architecture and Nagara Bhumija styles. It even adopted advanced architectural designs such as the usage of sandbox technology to lay a strong horizontal step tower foundation in order to build the Vimana which not only provides greater stability to the structure but also makes it earthquake resistant. The architectural style of this temple was so well known that even Italian traveller Marco Polo visited the region and referred to the temple as the brightest star in the galaxy of temples. The main structure of the temple which you see in the image has been built using reddish sandstone and the columns on the outside have large brackets of black basalt which is rich in iron, magnesium and silica that makes the structure very strong. On the columns and as well as on the insides of the temple you find that mythical animals, female dancers, musicians have been carved and it is considered to be a masterpiece of Kakatiya architecture. This historic temple was even inscribed on the UNESCO World Heritage Site last year and hence statements 2 and 3 are correct whereas statement 1 is incorrect. So the right answer is option C 2 and 3 only. Now let's take a look at the second question. The Hilsa fish plays a role in diplomacy between which two countries? India and Sri Lanka, India and Thailand, India and Bangladesh or India and Pakistan? See this topic is in news on the account of visit of Bangladeshi Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina to India. During this visit, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina is expected to bring up key issues including the Tista water dispute which hasn't been settled from decades. And this gives us an opportunity to talk about the Tista dispute and also to understand the Hilsa diplomacy of Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. See the Tista river is a vital river shared between India and Bangladesh and happens to be one of the major transboundary rivers between the two countries amongst the 50 plus transboundary rivers between India and Bangladesh. The Tista originates in Sikkim and flows down into West Bengal and then crosses over into Bangladesh. 
the waters of the Tista is crucial for both India and Bangladesh. And since a long time, Bangladesh has been demanding 50% share of these waters. The Tista, which originates at the Kangze and Zemu glaciers of Kanchenjunga Biosphere Reserve, happens to be the fourth largest transboundary river for Bangladesh and hence it depends heavily on it for irrigation, fishing, drinking water needs, etc. But much of the river's catchment area lies in India, around 83% of it. And as the waters of the Tista are vital for West Bengal as well, India claims a 55% share as an upper riparian state. So to share these waters, negotiations have been going on since 1983 and yet a final agreement has not been achieved. Back in 2011, under Prime Minister Manmohan Singh, an interim deal was worked out but it couldn't be finalised due to political pressure from West Bengal. And since then the issue has dragged, with India being unable to fulfil the promise due to political compulsions in West Bengal. But Bangladesh keeps insisting that India has to fulfil this promise as Bangladesh gave tremendous assistance to India, especially after 2009, to put an end to Northeast insurgency, which enjoyed a strong support base in Bangladesh until Sheikh Hasina became the Prime Minister in 2009. So in return, one of the key promises made by India was to deliver the Tista Water Agreement, but due to the compulsions of regional and domestic politics, the agreement has not been fulfilled yet by India. So during the visit, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina is bringing back the issue and exerting diplomatic pressure on India to fulfil this agreement at the earliest. And quite often, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina has engaged in Hilsa fish diplomacy whenever she wants to reach out to Indian leaders in order to send out a soft power gesture while discussing key issues and controversial disputes. Here it is important to note that the Hilsa fish, which you can see in the image over here, is a staple in Bengali cuisine and is attached with a lot of cultural and economic significance both in West Bengal and as well as in Bangladesh. So considering its significance, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina has often offered Hilsa fish to Indian leaders as a soft power gesture to build closer ties and this is dubbed as Hilsa diplomacy. So with this understanding, we can clearly answer this question. The right answer is option C, India and Bangladesh. Now let's take a look at the third question. What purpose does a dark sky reserve serve? Does it facilitate astronomical observations? Does it protect nocturnal bird species? Or does it help in promoting astronomy-based tourism? See, this topic has been picked from the Indian Express. And according to this article, India is setting up its first dark sky reserve in Ladakh. A dark sky reserve is primarily set up to deal with light pollution, which inhibits astronomical observations and also affects the wildlife in the region. Because animals and birds are extremely sensitive to light, especially nocturnal species. And more importantly, to carry out astronomical observations, you need to tackle light pollution emanating from urban areas and habitated areas in order to enhance astronomical visibility. So to tackle this challenge posed by light pollution, there is an international framework to set up dark sky reserves, which is recognized globally through the International Dark Sky Association or IDSA. So countries can get key locations designated as dark sky reserves just like they get designated their cultural and natural sites as a UNESCO World Heritage Site or as a Biosphere Reserve. Once a dark sky reserve is recognized by IDSA, the administration can enforce strict regulations on light and illumination in the region and thereby improve the sky quality and enhance natural darkness during the night so that it facilitates astronomical observations and also helps in protecting the nocturnal species and the wildlife. In the case of India, Ladakh is a natural site for such observations and the Indian Institute of Astrophysics, based out of Bengaluru along with Department of Science and Technology, has already established an observatory at Ladakh called the Hanle Observatory. The Hanle Observatory at Ladakh is an ideal location for making such astronomical observations. As it is located ideally in the western Himalayas at an altitude of 4500 meters and it happens to be a cold desert. Due to the harsh conditions, there is very sparse population in the region and hardly any habitation and as a result, light pollution is naturally very less. This region is located on top of Mount Saraswati 
in the Nilamkul plain and has ideal weather conditions for astronomical observations such as cloudless skies and low atmospheric water vapour. So at the Hanley Observatory, Indian Institute of Astrophysics has already set up several sophisticated telescopes to look deep into space and make key observations. So to further tackle light pollution in the region and to make it easier for astronomical observations and also to promote astronomy-based tourism, India has applied to IDSA to designate the region as India's first dark sky reserve. Once designated, the authorities can enforce regulations and strict restrictions on lighting in the region and establish a core reserve area that would be dedicated for astronomical observations and would also encourage tourists to visit the region while parallelly protecting the wildlife from light pollution. So based on this, we can easily answer this question. All the three statements are correct and hence option D is the right answer. Now let's take a look at the fourth question. Which of the following statements are correct? PM Schools for Rising India or PM Shri is a new centrally sponsored scheme. Under the scheme, model schools are identified and nurtured to showcase all components of the National Education Policy of 2020. These will act as exemplar schools or model schools and also offer mentorship to other schools in their vicinity. See, according to this article in the Indian Express, Prime Minister Modi has announced the launch of PM Shri or PM Schools for Rising India, which is a new centrally sponsored scheme. Under this scheme, the government of India will be choosing a few schools which are either run by the centre itself or by states or by union territories or even those schools run by local administration. These schools would be nurtured to be established as model schools which will help in highlighting and showcasing all the key components of the National Education Policy of 2020. These model schools will further offer mentorship to other schools in the region in order to promote the vision and philosophy of the National Education Policy. See, under NEP, the core driving philosophy is to focus on learning outcomes of students instead of merely pushing them to clear exams and score marks. So this motto and philosophy of NEP will be imbibed into these select model schools through the PM Shri scheme, which later will help in grooming other schools in the region as well to help them adopt this core doctrine of the national education policy. Because under NEP, the focus is on promoting conceptual understanding and real-life application of knowledge instead of prioritizing rote learning and marks and exams. So based on this understanding, we can say that all the three statements are correct and hence option D is the right answer. Now let's take a look at a previous question from 2021 prelims paper. With reference to the history of India, Ulgulan or the Great Tumult is a description of which of the following? The Revolt of 1857, the Mapilla Rebellion of 1921, Indigo Revolt of 1859-1860 or Birsa Munda's Revolt of 1899-1900. The correct answer is option D. See, the Great Tumult or Ulungan was a movement started by legendary tribal leader Birsa Munda against the exploitation of tribal communities by the British. It was essentially a political and religious revolt against British laws such as the Chota Nagpur Tenancy Act, which curbed the tribal rights of the local communities. And hence, Birsa Munda led this tribal rebellion, called the Ulungan or the Great Tumult, in order to protect tribal rights. Now for fact of the day, let's talk about PMI or Purchasing Managers Index, which finds a mention in both the Hindu and Indian Express today. Both the articles are referring to a revival in economic activities in the services sector based on an improvement seen in the PMI index. So in this context, it becomes important to understand what is PMI or the Purchasing Managers Index. See, the Purchasing Managers Index helps in understanding the prevailing economic trends both in the manufacturing sector and as well as in the services sector. It basically provides a measure of the business activities that are taking place based on a survey that is conducted amongst purchasing managers across various industries. Purchasing managers in various factories and companies are given a questionnaire in order to understand the extent of purchases made and new orders placed over the last month 
and to compare this data with the previous years. So based on new orders placed, output employment, supply deliveries, inventories, new export orders, etc., a final composite index is derived by merging the PMI index of manufacturing sector and services sector. This index has a scale of 0 to 100 and a figure above 50 denotes that the economy is expanding as there has been an increase in business activities in manufacturing and services. If the index is below 50, it denotes a contraction in economic activity and you can even determine the extent of contraction or expansion depending on how further away the index is from 50. This index which is brought out by IHS market along with few other organizations is a widely watched index around the world as it is seen as a key tracker of business activity and helps in understanding growth trends both in manufacturing sector and as well as in the services industry. This index is closely watched by investors, governments, businesses, traders and as well as by economists and academicians. So on this note, let's conclude the daily quiz for today and if you like the initiative, do let us know by sharing your comments. Don't forget to press the like button and do subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.